Thanks for stopping by Capsule to Cone. I'm Matt McQueen, and today on the channel, we are going to take a trip to Northern Kentucky, right across the river from Cincinnati, Ohio, to probably one of the coolest, if not the coolest, recording studio in the southwestern Ohio, northern Kentucky area. We are going to Mike's Music Production, which is a recording studio right above Mike's Music in Covington, Kentucky. This studio is run by Mike Reeder, who is an icon in the used and vintage guitar community. The dude has multiple Les Pauls from literally every year of production from 1952 to today. He has been featured on a guitar valuation show on an antique show with Joe Bonamassa talking to the man himself, Joe B, about old vintage guitars, and uh, I went and visited Mike and Elton, the studio manager, in their studio, and we did an interview, and we did a studio tour. I'm gonna split this video up into two parts, and this is gonna be part one, where I'm just doing the interview, talking to Mike and Elton about how they got started into music, how Mike got started into music production, how Elton made his journey, and how their studio is starting to come together, and then the following video, we will look at all the gear and look at all their space. It's a super, super cool spot built in a old theater turned guitar store turned recording studio above a guitar store. And uh, we got to look at some really, really cool old vintage guitars and amplifiers while we were there. And uh, we got to talk about a lot of cool things and the music that they're making sounds so rad. So enjoy this interview with Mike and Elton from Mike's Music Production in Covington, Kentucky. Well, I'm sitting here with Mike Reeder and Elton Clifton at uh, Mike's Music Productions in Covington, Kentucky. And we're gonna do like a really wonderful studio tour here. Mike is the owner, you're a staple legend in the used vintage music community. And then you also have this amazing studio that we're in the middle of right now. And then Elton Clifton is the manager of this location and also the uh, one of the studio engineers. I guess there's multiple, yeah. right? And so we're just, we're having a chat. We're talking about the music that they're making and we're gonna do a studio tour. So enjoy the rest of uh, the episode. So, Mike, tell me how how you, how did you get here in uh, this location? Uh, well, it's been a it's been a long journey. I mean, or originally the first Mike's Music was in the basement of my house. It was called Mike's Music and Flea. Okay, it's basically like a flea market. Okay, that's how I started, <laughs> um, and that was in Ross, Kentucky, which is on Route Eight in the middle of nowhere. Okay, and um, started with just a few guitars of my own, and quickly became sort of a vintage guitar store in a couple of years. Right, and um, well, I was watching your uh, episode with uh, Joe Bonamassa on the the KET um, uh, yeah. PBS, and he said he said the first time that you take a vintage guitar and you sell it for twenty five percent more than what you uh, bought it for, you become a vintage guitar dealer. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, actually, initially it started from I was playing in a band with my wife, and I just wanted good gear for us, sure. you know, and uh, we were writing songs and stuff, and I was just really just hunting for myself. Yeah. Um, but uh, I had a paper route, and we were barely surviving. So I came up with the concept that we could buy a, you know, a commercial property and live above it, and I could have like a flea market kind of thing. Because I've always been sort of a picker kind of guy. Yeah. Um, so. So where, what decade is that? Is that? Uh, that would be early nineties. Early 90s. And before that, I spent some time in LA playing music, and um, you know, went to MIT school, and I also was an engineer at syndicated radio programs. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, Couple of studios, and you know, I, I did some some live TV production. So stuff. you were you were engineering as long as thirty years ago back in LA. Yeah, I was yeah. probably uh, you know right out of high school, eighty four to eighty nine in that area. Gotcha. And as soon as I came back here, I met my wife. So gotcha. And then yeah. you had the commercial space. You're living above it, and yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. So that's sort of how it started, um, and you know, and and just the flea market turned into me flipping some guitars. And it, you know, it, it became, I mean, that was always the goal to have a music story. That's why it's Mike's music and flea. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, you know, um, from playing in bands and playing around, you know, Clifton, where my main store is now, mm -hmm. um, was where all the clubs were. Okay. And um, there was, you know, on that little two block area they call Short Vine. Yeah. There was many, many clubs and, you know, you could walk down the street and there'd be six bands playing in one night. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and, it's a and great so we played yeah. up there and we hung out up there. I've been to several shows there over the yeah. years. So, yeah. You know, so I knew that was the place to be. And um, a friend of mine had a store up there at Jimmy D. Yeah. Um, and uh, it just, so I moved up there. Uh, this place it was Moles Records, which was right next to Bogart's. Okay. Um, that room mm-hmm. became available. Okay. So I opened up my store, my second store there. Okay. And I had Mike's Music and Flea going on, and then Mike's Music and Clifton. That store quickly became yeah. a big deal. So I closed down the one at my house after a couple of years okay. and ended up buying that building. And then the all we took the whole thing. So that's how we got three stories, you know, of, of Which, that store. Let me just interject for everybody that's watching. If you have not been to downtown Cincinnati and been to that store, the store that he's talking about, it's uh, the first time that I went into it was probably 2003 or 2004. So nearly 20 years ago, I was, I just graduated college and it's like, even, even 20 years ago, it was like a, you walked into almost a guitar museum. Like you've got like the Gibson stuff and then you've yeah. got like the room that's a lot of Fender stuff. And then you yeah. go up a level. I mean, it really hasn't like, changed much. It's pretty yeah. much the same. Yeah. Um, you know, our first ground level is like our storage and where we do shipping out of okay. the back. Um, we have a little outside area there you can go out and load stuff and then that's the ground floor and then the first door which is the the ground level floor where the street is okay um is you know we have the gibson room and the fender room what we call the marshall room yeah um all on that first that's my favorite room by the way (laughs) (laughs) and then the second floor we have keyboards drums a mandolin room, which just we keep locked a lot, which has okay. violins and mandolins and banjos. You get some old stuff in there, like uh, from the tons of yeah. stuffs in there. And then we have an acoustic room and basses okay. and, and keyboards. Okay. And then the third floor, we have what we call the expensive room, which is sort of a gated area where I have a little office in the way. Okay. And a sort of a bigger room with expensive stuff in it. Okay. And we have a repair shop, and we also have a, a sort of a another storage room up there. Okay. Um, so wow. yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much what that store is like. And it, it's really strictly vintage guitar retail. Okay. Um, I mean, not just vintage guitar, but, you know, collectible and vintage things. We do keyboards sure. and drums and guitars and banjos and mandolins. That's one of the things different from my stores. We've always done a little bit of everything, drums. And um, a lot of vintage guitar stores are very specific. They just do vintage guitars. Sure. And a lot of them just do like electric guitars. Yeah. We've always done a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, Mainly because I've always been interested in playing different instruments and, you know, um, I didn't really see any reason to, like, just do a minute thing, you know what yeah. I mean? So, you know, luckily, that was a great move moving there because we're right next to Bogarts. We had every band you can imagine come through the store. Oh, yeah. I met a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I started doing guitar shows. I mean, that's how I met Joe. I, I, I knew Joe since his dad would take him around to guitar shows. Cause he's talking about, we were talking before, he's talking about Joe Bonamassa. Yeah. yeah. Joe's Joe, you know, like I think twelve or thirteen was like when I first met him. Okay. Because his dad would set up at shows and sell guitars and stuff. And you did that KET episode like twenty seventeen, I think I saw. I think that's when it aired. Uh, you might have shot yeah, it I mean, uh, I'm I did that show actually for five or six years and we did a bunch okay. of those shows. Yeah. Um once a year I would do a special. Um we did Greg Martin, um, Ed King, Vince Gill. Vince Gill, yeah, and Joe. And there was a couple that were lined up that never happened. Gotcha. Um, and that show's supposedly on hiatus, which means it may return, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, and and then I was also the appraiser for the the KT uh, Antique um, Kentucky Club show. Yeah, yeah. The which, two episodes that I watched, you did an appraisal of a uh, uh, like a, a Gretsch Super Falcon, I think. Yeah, really oh, rare. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a that was a cool guitar yeah. for sure because it was a. Uh, I remember right. It was like a yeah. double cutaway version of a yeah. White Falcon. Yeah, and all those yeah. episodes you can see them yeah. on our on our page on your YouTube okay, page, cool. which is the Village YouTube page, or yeah. also on KT or PBS, either one of those. So I want to talk more about the production side of things because that's sure. you know Capital of Cone. My channel is more of a right. music production thing, but I think it's important because um, your store and just your history in the community it obviously is feeding what you're doing here right. here and now. Um, and so we'll we'll talk about that in a second, but I do think that it's important. You know, if you you you, I just want to say you owe it to yourselves if you haven't been to downtown Cincinnati to make sure that you uh, come to the Cincinnati store, and then to also just it's you know fifteen minutes jump across the river, probably come less than that, probably come and see the 10. yeah really you, you're probably right yeah just come across and and see the downtown Covington store because I probably had been to the Cincinnati location two or three times 
before somebody in the store told me, mm-hmm. oh, there's one right, there's another one right across yeah. the river. They might have what you're looking for. And then yeah. I went and I was, this this location is cool because um, it's a it's an, it's a theater, right? So yeah. tell, so tell us the name of the theater. studio and then. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you to here. So basically, okay. um, you know, we, we opened up the other store in 91. Okay. Um, I closed down my house store in 93. We bought the whole building. Okay. And, and that place ended up getting super packed. Where gotcha. You couldn't. You couldn't hardly walk through it, so I was looking for another location. Okay. Um, at that time, this location was pretty much exactly the way it is now. A guy had a studio up here. It looked completely different, but he had a studio okay. up here. He was having shows going on in the theater room, and he had his music store in the front room. It was called Hay- Hayes Brothers Music. Gotcha. And he was mainly doing bluegrass and country type stuff. Um, so I found this place, Guitar Honey. Okay. He posted a guitar for sale. I came here, and I was like. It's super cool. And because I'm a picker and always been in architecture and stuff, I fell in love with the building too. Because sure. it's an old deco building. Yeah. Supposedly this building was designed by the guy who did um, MGM theaters in LA, which was also one of my favorite buildings when I worked out there, which is kind of another weird yeah. coincidence. But anyway, um, so I fell in love with the building. We became sort of friends doing business together. Um, he eventually put the place up for sale. And that's how I decided to move here. Gotcha. Um, when we first came here, my intentions were always to do exactly what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. To have a production house, to have a production division, okay. to have that part of my life come back because it yeah. sort of left. Um, I was still playing in bands, but I wasn't really, I had a home studio. I wasn't really like producing anything or doing anything like that. And, and with um, the guitar stores, you were traveling around to like vintage guitar shows. Yeah, I was and, always doing that. Because I've been to several of those over the years yeah. and seen you many times behind your booth, you right, know, reeling right, and dealing right. and stuff. So. That became sort of my yeah. life for the most part, even though I was doing the TV thing and occasionally I was dabbling in that stuff. Um, but uh, so anyway, came available. This became the second store in okay. Covington, which is it's actually only like two miles away. It's really not far. Yeah. The other store is on UC campus. Um but, you know, if you drive through Cincinnati, it's not very far. Yeah. So anyway, um, so that's how we got here. Um, in the course, of, that was probably 15, 20 years ago. Okay. Um, the store, once again, kind of took over. And a friend of mine, Mark Ray, who I play in a band with, managed this place, who is also a theater guy. He teaches theater. So um, the intentions were always to do what we're doing right now. Gotcha. It just sort of never really happened. Yeah. We would occasionally do something, but for the most part, it wasn't something that um, evolved the way I wanted it to in the beginning. Let me shut this thing off. It's my wife calling me. <laughs> no way we don't. <laughs> so anyway, here we are. Yeah. Um, I, you know, we decided to make it happen about three years ago. Okay. Um, I had a very good friend of mine come um, into um, sort of, he was the first engineer. He was sort of like my assistant managed the place, Brian Lovely. Okay. He helped me set up the studio. We re- reha- rehabbed it. Um, Elton came on. He was working at the other store at the time. We were okay. mainly doing production of my own stuff. Mm-hmm. And it sort of involved in Brian. Um, Brian is is now just an engineer. I took over management. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how we did that. We I had some clients sort of saved up over the years that wanted me to produce their stuff. But for the most part, now um, Elton's bringing people in. I have cool. five other engineers, Mike Wojciechowicz, um, uh, Mike Tocolby, um, not five. There's me, and then there's no one. Uh, and yeah. Brian. So, yeah, right. so yeah. So we each do a lot of work in here. We all bring in our own clients. Okay. It's all very different, you know. Brian's very hooked up in the jazz community, and um, you know, and, and actually he's an amazing musician. So he has okay. all kinds of connections. Um, I mainly spent most of my life as a musician doing you know, hard rock and, and sort of punk and like weird alternative stuff. Yeah. Um, although I've played in a lot of cover bands and, and as a bass player, you know, done all kinds of things. But sure. for the most part, that's where my world is. Elton has been done a lot of like Americana. Yeah. Um, I, he's amazing at vocals. And Mike Tocolby, I don't know if you know it, he's the head of uh, Sin State Audio okay. Production. No, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, he's head of that whole division. So he's like super talented guy gotcha um and we all kind of came together and, and we we did the studio we redid uh, all the sound booths uh we opened up the theater room so that we can record and do production down there and uh, that's cool i yeah. bet that's nice and spacious sounding yeah, yeah. and when ket uh put the show on hiatus i was like well 
I want to start doing my own shows. We opened up our YouTube channel. We've, yeah. been, we've been doing our own shows. We have Fret Buzz. We have Guitar Pickers. Links to all these yeah. Mike's channel in the in the description box, so if you want to check that out. Help me think of the shows. Live at the Village, where we yeah. mm-hmm. show Live at bands. The village. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot of things going on, on in, the, in that vein, too. Okay. We're going to have, soon, we're going to have uh, a little thing felt that's going to happen every month. Oh, yeah. We're excited <laughs> about that. So, <laughs> tell us. It's going to be Noodle yeah. without Noodles. <laughs> noodles without <laughs> Noodles. Without noodles without Noodles. Eating noodles. <laughs> I'm going big time. <laughs> Learn from my Facebook. Because he does even... all the guitar videos. Right. Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah, a game yeah, star yeah. from yeah, that. Yeah, he's familiar with one of the Yeah, guitars. there you yeah. go. Yeah, I watch his videos on my, when, when I say <laughs> pop up on my Facebook feed. So, Elton, tell, tell us about your journey. How did you get hooked up here? You know, Mike already said you were at the Cincinnati store, and then you you came over here, and you're running this. Well, it was uh, kind of just, you know, great timing, because I was at a studio, and I had been at a studio um, for like 10 years uh, and worked, and they were in the process of just kind of shutting everything down. The, the, The people that had owned the studio or were running it decided they were, you know, ready to get out, and right around that time, Actually, you were doing our band. I was recording. Actually, that's one of the last projects I ever did was your band. Yeah, okay. Because he was doing a citywide tour, and one of his stops was with me where I was working. And so it was just kind of a natural progression because I was gotcha. already doing yeah. some work for Yeah, so you guys knew each other before. Yeah, yeah and okay. I was like, you know, I need some help with some production stuff. I'm starting to, like, do a lot more of it. Yeah. And, and he initially started with working with other stories, like okay. listing uh, guitars and stuff. And, and it just mm. evolved into – you know, me and Brian had some meetings. Like, we got to get some other engineers in here. Um, and I had 10 years worth of clientele that, bless right. our hearts, have been fairly loyal to me, which I'm sure, like, yours are. And, yeah. you know, they're like, well, okay, you're yeah. over here now. Come on over. So, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been it's been great. Yeah, that's awesome. So, tell me about the studio, because since you're the engineer, let's ask some of the nerd questions. Let's <laughs> ask so away. So I'll you're, try running, you're, you're running Pro Tools. We'll, we'll put some B-roll in here. Okay. You're running Pro Tools. Your front end is this uh, Soundcraft Series 600, 1600. 1600. Yeah. 1600 yeah. console. That's okay. my doing. Kind of a, a great combination because we're running Pro Tools HD. Okay. Uh, as an, an, an older HD system, but, you know, those of you out there that have, that have used HD know that it's fantastic. Pro yeah, I don't. Great. It sounds once you learn, it. Once you use HD, it's like, it's, how did I record it, it before great. I used this? And, of course, you know, then you all know that HD has no front end. So, you know, Mike had this um, Soundcraft 1600 that we're basically using just the front end of. Okay. Yeah, um, Tom Petty so the, used it. Dylan used it. That's a pretty famous board. Yeah. yeah. And especially my so experience in LA. Cues. Yeah, a lot which of those are fantastic were and very responsive awesome. and sound great. But that's the basic setup, okay. you know, is, is through this console directly into Pro Tools HD. Okay. I mean, we do have, obviously, have other options. We've got tape options. Yeah, we got a couple of reels downstairs. We got doubles and triples of a lot of things that we need. Okay. You right. know, luckily, because... Um, of all the years in the vintage guitar store, I know amazing um, repair guys and you know people that work a lot on electronics. Yeah, and yeah. On any of the big productions house, it's very important, especially when you're doing yeah. old stuff, is to have those people available. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. You know. And most of my personal clients uh, just love the idea of the of the very good sounding analog front end. Yeah. But then the ease and quickness of digital editing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know. So, yeah. oh yeah, nudging and <laughs> things right. like that won't give too much away. But, yeah, I mean, you know, we could cut yeah. tape, but you know, really, yeah. honestly, a lot of that anymore is, is most of, most of the editing, mixing is all it's all digital. Well, it's just so expensive and time consuming yeah. too. And you know, most most bands just, are working on a, you know, they're working on tighter budget exactly. and they need it in a shorter amount of time yeah, because I mean, the industry's changed. You know, I mean, yeah. people need singles singles and EPs quickly. They need to they need to turn it yeah. out. And they need to. You know, every eight to 12 months is what I tell my clients. You should be at least putting out something new or mm-hmm. once every couple of months putting out a single. And I'm sure you guys are saying yeah. similar yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. High turnover and, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean, we do a lot of video stuff too anymore. Um, uh, that's where a lot of it's going, you know, to, you know, social media video stuff. Yeah. They'll come and they record, you know, they'll record a song or two or an album and then we'll capture it because we have, you know, all the video equipment. We have four or five 4K cameras. We yeah. can capture it live. They can turn it into behind the scenes of the making of, or yeah. all that kind of stuff, right. and, and then take the production of the song and put yeah. it in there. You know, that's that's kind of why I think a lot of it's going. You know? Yeah. So and you're then, doing Americana stuff, I, country I, stuff. You know, rock. I do a little bit of everything. Yeah. I mean, whatever. You know, I'll do whatever gets brought to me. I do enjoy um, the capture. I do enjoy people playing actual physical instruments yeah. and miking them. 
yeah. and recording them and capturing. So, you know, when you get into more like maybe electronic type of stuff, yeah. I mean, of course I would do it, but my fine, I'm sure yours is too, and, and I know Mike's is, yeah. is yeah. finding a right microphone, a right placement, yeah. right. someone totally. playing a really good sounding instrument yep. and hearing it back and going, ah, that's yeah. there's just joy in that. Yeah. So whatever's involved with that, I'm all in. So yeah. how, are you, how are you running your sessions? Are you doing stuff? With the band live all all throughout these different rooms or are you we've doing, done it in all different yeah. ways um, one of the things we really like to do though since we have such a big place is we can have everybody, everybody play at once yeah we usually put the drums down there and open up the balcony so okay. you can get the whole room and we'll hang a you know u87 over the balcony that's cool and capture like the big giant bottom drum sound oh yeah bouncing mm -hmm. off the theater room um, we can also record downstairs on the stage we got cabling that runs up the pro tools yeah. Or we could also, you know, hook Pro Tools up down there on a laptop. That's awesome. Um, capture mm -hmm. that room because that room sounds amazing. And the, uh, the stairwell too. We, yeah. you, you guys yeah. haven't seen this yet, but I'll cut in some B-roll yeah. right here. The stairwell. You said you've used that. Put microphones in yeah. there so that you can do, yeah. which is which is sick. That's the yeah. you know. I, yeah. the, the the one thing about this space that is, I think is fantastic is, is the space. Sure. Uh, the l little nooks and crannies and places to put microphones or put people mm -hmm. uh, is really unique and interesting, and it, uh, uh, it makes for fa capturing fascinating sounds. Yeah, that's, that's right. what I've always said about my place too. I couldn't agree with you more on that. It's like you, no, no one else has your space, right? You know, so the records yeah. you do here, even if we did the same exact process and microphone and you know mic pre, right. your room is different than my room. Right. So your sure. record's going to sound different than mine. And so that's uh, that becomes that once you start to learn how to use that to your advantage, you know, right. Right. the space you've got, that's when you start making really cool records that are unique to right here. Right, right. which is what it should be all about anyway, which I understand it's not always the case, but yeah. that would be great if that's what it was all about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting because... Because it's, I don't know, maybe you, you might not be able to capture it, but there's the projector room up there. And I don't know if you notice the ceiling is kind of rounded. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's so they could they could shoot down to this, the old theater. Mm -hmm. um, we've recorded vocals literally sitting right here. Right here. Many, that's many cool. times. And it sounds great. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't mean to interrupt. This, this yeah. building is full of so many happy acoustic accidents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's well, just like fantastic. This is probably, what is this, nine, ten feet to that ceiling here, but then, but this room oh, is open out like to 12. there and it's like, yeah. it started, that's going to be 25, We just measured it. Feet. We're getting new curtains um, tomorrow and next day. He just, I think it's 34 feet to the ceiling, didn't he? 34 feet. Stage, yeah. yeah. See, that's crazy. So yeah. I have an old church and your ceiling is higher than mine because yeah. mine floor to the, it's a peaked roof yeah. okay. uh, in my building. And so that's, only 24 feet. But so this is this is higher than that, which is awesome. Well, that's at the bottom because the floor slants. Okay. Oh, right, yeah, right, right. Floor slants. Okay, so just, not this room, but the theater. The theater, from the, from the theater gotcha. to the top. I yeah, gotcha. I don't know. Which is the same, it's the same height, but we're down two floors. Gotcha. So what, so how, have you guys managed to stay busy throughout this whole COVID thing and stuff um, like that with you know, fans too? Well, we, you know, we have kind of converted back to being a store a little bit more than we would want to, to be honest. Yeah. But because we have so many engineers, we probably have, you know, two to five sessions a week in here yeah. of some sort. Okay. Um, plus we all have bands and stuff. So we're doing our own stuff too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we could always be busier. Okay. You know, we, we would love to pick up some clients and, you know, the, the cool thing is, is, like I said, we have the ability to do anything from, you know, a commercial for a guy that wants to attract sales clients to, yeah. to, you know, a big band, we could do it sure. all here. Um, yeah. so yeah, I mean, um, audio wise, um, the cool thing is I feel like every engineer has their own little masterful thing. Yeah. You know, um, I really feel like Elton is great at capturing vocals. Um, especially, I mean, he's so good at it. He does all my stuff. He's just yeah. really, really good at it. And everybody has their own little niche. And Mike Woj, is, we call him Woj. He's like really good at like hard rock stuff. He does the real, know. yeah. When his bands come in, we know it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Woj, Woj is here because it's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, I mean, up you know, here, man. Gotcha. we're lucky that we all can play pretty well. And, yeah. and we can we can, we can can be a great house band if people need it. Yeah. Um, you know, Tocolvi is like an amazing keyboardist and, and, uh, Brian's just a, a wonderful musician. So, I mean, we have that ability too. So we're pretty well-rounded, you know, I'm hoping when things open up, we can do a lot more stuff, you know what I mean? So let me ask you this question. I, this might be putting you on the spot a little bit, so I apologize in advance. But 
where you're a store when you have clients in. What if what if one of your clients is like, hey, can we bust out that? 50s strat to put on this record or do you ever do anything like that or will well, you, yeah i mean that, will you that, do that, rentals with the gear or how does that work uh, yeah i mean we're getting more and more into that because we have all the gear that anybody would ever want yeah. you want to use a 59 burst i have that option yeah um you know it's all relative you know a lot of the big studios in la and new york do that kind of stuff and sure and and we're heading more and more towards that way yeah um you know like right now we got something going on. So there's like a candy apple 64 strat downstairs and a couple of tellies and stuff that we're gonna we're gonna use. So yeah, yeah, I mean and same way with a lot of the cool mics, you know. We have yeah. got some great old mics. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you for watching the interview with Mike and Elton. I am super thankful to those guys. So Mike Elton, if you get a chance to watch the whole video, thank you so much for entertaining me for four hours and thank you for being patient while all of this new stuff that is around me happened over the last few weeks. We had a great time, and in the next video, we are going to look at all the gear, and Mike and Elton are gonna take us on a tour, talk about the history of the studio. It's a fantastic spot, and so if you are in Northern Kentucky or South Ohio, South Southwestern Ohio, and you're looking for a spot that is within close proximity and has some cool, older, vintage, vibey stuff, you need to just go to Mike and Elton Studio. They'll do a fantastic job. They're great guys, great people to work with, and the spot just has so much vibe, and there's just so much history in that building that it is definitely worth it. I think that it'll be a rad place to make a record. So uh, leave a comment below. If you'd like to see us do some more stuff, you know, I've got a couple of ideas for ways that uh, possibly even Curtis and I can go and collab with Mike and Elton and maybe do a few things in the future, especially guitar-related stuff, amp-related stuff. So Mike, I'm putting a bug in your ear officially for that. Let us know. Let us know in the comments because we would love to be able to do that. Thank you once again for listening to an old man ramble. I'm Matt. This is Capsule to Cone, and I'll see you in the next one. Whew.